Hi, I'm Vicky Wilson and I'm from New Zealand. Uh, so my family always had a love for horses. Uh, my mum never had the financial backing to have a horse and her parents didn't have that support. Uh, so when I was two she got me my very first pony. A uh, very naughty little Shetland uh, that I came off a few times and she would have me out cantering behind her on the farm. Uh, I think it was end of two, start of three, I was cantering out behind her on the farm, on the, on the long rope obviously. And that kind of started the love of horses and um, it kind of grew from there and unbroken horses, com competition horses the whole way through. Uh, it's been a really interesting journey coming into Road to the Horse. It was completely unexpected. I wasn't expecting a phone call from Tootie in the start of December. Um, we had a lot of other plans and we show jump full time. Uh, in the winter time we travel around the world working with different wild horses. And uh, when I got the phone call it was like I was a little surprised uh, to be honest. I wasn't expecting it and I guess very honoured and excited to, about what, to what was to become. Coming to Road to the Horse, um, it's been a really interesting and exciting journey. Like I haven't been able to really concentrate on it, I guess, until the last week. Uh, we've had a very competitive uh, show jumping season over in New Zealand, and that finished 10 days ago. Uh, so I did manage to sneak uh, away to Australia for five days uh, to spend some time with Dan Steers, who has competed here. Uh, so that was really interesting. We got to sit down, watch some DVD footage of previous years, start a couple of horses there, and just a couple of good tips from him. And then I've been incredibly lucky to be based with Dan James uh, for the last week prior to this. So yeah, it's been fantastic. I couldn't have had two better guys to help me on this journey. I wouldn't say I'm nervous. I'm kind of really excited. Every time I walk out there, I'm like, wow, I'm here. This is actually quite big. It's bigger than I thought it was. Um, I didn't realise, I didn't really know what Road to the Horse was before I was invited. Uh, so to come here and uh, really go, okay, I've made it this far, I'm at the World Championships for Colts starting, four in the world competing this year, that is pretty big. So yeah, really excited. Yeah, so when I got the phone call in December um, asking if I would be interested in doing it, I was like, it's kind of our busiest season. So right through uh, December, particularly to the end of March, is our most competitive show jumping season. And so we couldn't assign any set times for breaking in horses or really concentrating on that. And so I've kind of allowed my whole life and what I've done with horses to be my lead up to this event. And then yeah, three and a half weeks ago, I went to Dan Stairs in Australia, spent five days there. He got me to sit down. I watched 48 hours of previous Road to the Horse DVD footage. I must admit, I did fall asleep a few times. <laughs> it was a little hard, but it kind of got me into the zone, I guess, that what obstacles, what gear I need, what, what works and what doesn't work. Um, and so that kind of got me set for there. And then I went back to compete at our uh, biggest event of the entire season back in New Zealand. I was a week there and then we flew here. And so I had 36 hours of flights and layover and then I've been at Dan James ever since. And I guess at Dan's we've kind of been playing with a demo horse just to practice, make sure things are working there, picking up a few little uh, tips with the Liberty horses because that's been really interesting. I haven't done a huge amount of work on the ground with Liberty, a lot riding, so I think we've been sharing a bit of knowledge this week um, and I've absolutely loved my time so far. I guess Road to the Horse is like how big the event actually is. So I hadn't really put it into perspective, I guess, uh, what it actually meant. I came in here um, and everyone's asking me how's, how it's been and how the rest of the week's been. I'm, I'm going to have a great time. It's going to be a lot of fun. And they're like, it's not supposed to be fun, it's competition. And I, I believe the entire event will be fun. And it's making the most of every situation with whatever my horse allows. And uh, if we walk away the champions or we walk away last or in the middle, I'm going to leave with a smile on my face and knowing that we've done as much as we can in the three days that we have. Yeah, so the competitors I'm uh, working with this year are really uh, great horsewomen. Uh, and every discipline that they do, uh, foundations of their cult starting right through to their competition careers, uh, they're fantastic uh, horsewomen. So it's, it's going to be very interesting, very different from the way I obviously train and the history behind it. I don't have a history of people and support backing me up with breaking in or starting young horses or the western side of things. So to walk into this a little English and completely opposite from the other three is going to be a little different. And I think it's going to be really interesting and a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it.
Road to the Horse is an incredibly big, exciting event, one that I wasn't expecting, I can honestly say that. Uh, like coming here and just the lead up to the event, um, day one, we haven't had the opening yet, so I can only guess what the rest of the days are going to be and I know I can anticipate they're going to be big and they're going to be exciting and there's going to be a lot of action. So I guess coming to Road to the Horse, my training methods are a little, little bit different. Uh, my philosophy with horses, how I start them, uh, is very interesting. I'm hoping I can explain that in my clinic and my demos and the way I start uh, my cult this week. And it's all about um, my horse being happy, happy in the mind, happy in the body, and enjoying and wanting to do a job. And I really believe that uh, my horse has to be my partner. He has to be a real equal, that when I set foot into that arena, when he does, it's like, okay, we're here together on a job. I don't want to dominate him, I don't want to make him do something he doesn't want to do. I really want him to go, okay, mum, this is what we're doing, I'm here all the way. And I think it's incredibly important is that um, if I walk into the arena loving what I do, I want my horse to do the same. I don't want it to be boring or a, a hard place to be, I want it to be um, every time you take kids to the zoo, they're excited and they run around. I want it to be the same for my horse. Every time I sit on my horse, he's going to the zoo. He's loving his life, he's enjoying it, it's an adventure. I don't want him going to school and it's a boring office that he hates his job. So I think it's all about how my horse loves his life and how he enjoys it and continues learning. I want a child scholar essentially out of it, a horse that continues learning and improving and wanting to get better and better. And every time I walk into that competition ring, I want a horse that fights for me, not against me. Well, I definitely can't whip crack like the Aussies. I can't lasso like the Americans. I think I've sat in a Western saddle maybe 30 times in my life. Uh, so this is definitely a very new experience for me. Uh, I'll start my colt and a halter bareback, ideally to a can walk trot canter before I put gear on it. And so it's all about um, allowing my horse the opportunity to move his feet and, and move out comfortably before I put gear on him and, and lock him down. So it's, um, yeah, you have to wait and see. So walking into the road to the horse, it's a little different for me because I don't start my horses in a round pen. Uh, probably 90% of my horses I would start outside uh, in a paddock area, arena situation, open area. And normally within five minutes of sitting on them, halter and bareback, we're up the road, out on the farm, up the hills. Walk, trot, canter, ideally in a first ride. Some horses won't get the canter, but day two they're out there happily going. Um, I've probably started 2%, 1, 2% in a round yard in my entire life, and the other 8% maybe on an arena. So it is completely different for me, and it's gonna be interesting. Yeah, so after Road to the Horse, we've got some really big goals and dreams for the next five years, and it's mostly show jumping. Uh, to compete on the world stage and hopefully get some horses that are Olympic Cup, Olympic or World Equestrian Games level uh, to produce the show, uh, show jumpers that far. And ideally we'll move overseas in a couple of years and start producing horses uh, for a number of disciplines. And just, I guess, starting a movement throughout the world that animal welfare and the holistic approach, not necessarily um, your natural everyday sort, but it's understanding the horse, why is my horse reacting the way he is? Um, and so we have a saying that we believe is, don't punish the symptoms, but find the solution. So whether it's pain or mental related, um, and if my horse has an issue out in the ring, you'll see me, I'll do some adjustments on it and some body work on it, because um, I would rather sort something out before I created an issue under saddle. Uh, so for a horse out of these 12 that I get to choose from, there's a certain type I definitely like. Obviously more of a jumping type than your reining or your cutting horses. And there are, there are a couple horses out there that are your more average types. Uh, there's a couple of cute quarter horse types obviously. But for myself I want something slightly um, less short and uh, typey for your quarter horse. Um, a really good head and eye set is really important for me. And a good temperament. And watching the horses move out this morning, it's something that can move out freely, um, that's not restricted in its movement and uses his body well. So when I walk into that round pen, it's all about giving him the opportunity just to see me. I don't want to put pressure on him straight away. I want to give him the chance just to hang out um, and ideally get him really comfortable so I can put that first rope or halter on him. Um, and hopefully get him really relaxed and confident with every situation that I can put him in. So going into the final round on Sunday, three hours is not a lot of time. 
Okay, yes, maybe six weeks on a normal horse you have the starting to be able to go around an obstacle course of how, how technical it is. That would, you would struggle with a normal break-in. So to be able to go in um, after three hours into that obstacle course, that is a huge amount of pressure on a horse's brain. So mentally, it will fry, fry a lot of horses. So we have to really focus and work through and make sure our horse is really relaxed, it's confident in every situation, so that we don't get out there on Sunday and actually scare them. I don't want to give them a fright, I want to, don't want to give them a reason to go backwards. Uh, so our two days that we have with that horse is the foundation for his future. So we want to set him up as well as we can so that he's confident and relaxed and happy to show how good he is out there. So I guess walking away from this competition, we have to ask ourselves, did we give our horse the best possible opportunity to leave this competition with a really good brain, uh, a horse that mentally is really well adjusted and coping with the situation? So we have to go, yes, three hours, rode to the horse, it's an incredibly stressful, a lot is going to happen in that horse's life. More pressure than any other horse in the world is going to have to cope with. So we have to go, we have to count that in. And that makes it really difficult because I'd say most of the trainers, all these trainers here, all these horsewomen, no, nobody wants to put that much pressure on a horse. But when you're in a competition sense like that, that's, that's how we've got to run. So we've just got to essentially go, okay, is there a foundation? Is our horse in every situation, the steps that we take, do we have something solid to fall back on when things start to go wrong and then we can step forward again? And that is incredibly important. And what might take us 15 minutes out here might take somebody two weeks or six weeks at home. So working with the wild horses in New Zealand, I can be sitting on a horse on day one. We've got horses on day 42 that it's their first ride and day 542, another horse's first ride. So it's taking in how well your horse can cope with the situation, with the press, pressure and the stress that we put on them, are they mentally and physically ready for what we ask? So Road to the Horse being the year of the celebration of the cowgirl, it's quite exciting because I believe a woman can do many things. I believe women can do everything. Uh, so I, at home I start horses, I shoe all my own horses, we do all our own horses body work, uh, we show jump to World Cup level, we travel and there's so many things like we have um, a list of things that we continuously keep adding to that we want to do in our life and I believe there should be we only limit ourselves, the restrictions we put on ourselves. So it's all about dreaming big and then working hard to achieve those dreams.